Rick back at the naturopath. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Before we jump into this video, don't forget at the end of the video, you can download some free resources that I've created just for you. The Candida Diet and Cleanse Starter Guide, the ultimate Candida uh, shopping list, the diet shopping list, and also the Candida, Candida Symptom Tracker, which you're gonna find very useful. So these are all for free. So at the end of the video, just jump into yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies and you can, down, you can download these things at no charge at all. If you have any questions, remember you can always ask those and either I can get back to you or the team. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch up with you at the end of the video. Eric Baker, naturopath. How are you guys going? It's nearly Christmas 2021. It's gone fast, is not it? <clears throat> I hope everyone's keeping safe. Should I stop certain types of foods during my treatment? Now, treatment of, you can put X, Y, Z behind there. Fibromyalgia, heart disease, um, candida infections, SIBO infections, parasite infections, autoimmune disease, acute disease it doesn't matter you fill in the blank should i stop certain types of foods during xyz treatment have a think what i'm going to say am i going to tell you that you should be eating certain kinds of foods and avoiding others yes and no i recently watched <clears throat> a very interesting series of documentaries on both netflix and youtube and i think it was disney channel and a few others now they weren't fluffy cat videos i don't look at that kind of stuff but these are documentaries on people that live 90 plus old people old people all right not as old as you out there are you 90 probably not you wouldn't be looking at this computer if you were 90. <clears throat> so and guess what the doco documentary found they found in many cases it wasn't so important the kind of foods the person was eating lots of people drank alcohol and in fact they found two alcoholic beverages to be more conducive of longevity than abstaining entirely from alcohol. And it made no difference whether it was whiskey, lager, gin, drambui, uh, champagne, it made no difference. That whole study in France about red wines, a bunch of crap, because when you look at other studies uh, that show that there are people that live just as long, if not longer, that drink other types of alcohol. The people that totally abstain from alcohol entirely tend to live shorter than people who have two drinks a day. So that slays that whole myth they don't drink alcohol, it's bad for your health. Yeah, of course it is, because people drink too much of the stuff, all right? People eat too much food. Food doesn't bad. Food's not bad, but when you're gonna eat five times a day at a buffet and you walk out like a you know big person, that's really bad. And then I get people on the YouTube channel, you're fat shaming people, you know, you're saying blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I'm here to help people improve their health. I'm not fat shaming anyone. In fact, I'm self deprecating. I kick myself up the butt more than I kick you up the butt. So I'm not about shaming anyone. I had to practice for too long to shame people. Okay, I call people out. That's what I do. I had a clinic and there was a bar behind me. And sometimes I'd go home and I'd see people there on detoxes with big glasses of red wine while they're on a two week liver cleanse, you know, they were shamed out, not me. So I've seen it. I've been in this game long enough to know what's going on. But <clears throat> what should you avoid if you're trying to improve your health? You know what you should avoid, all right? You know. Now you put three or four foods in your mind now that you probably think I'm gonna mention and those foods are correct. You know the foods you should avoid. I don't have to tell you like a parent talks to a three-year-old, okay? You can't have that and you can't have that, all this sort of crap. So we hear that enough. There are enough food police out there, you know? People get arrested all the time by the food police. Everyone who starts naturopathy uh, study or chiropractic study or whatever, chiropractors are the same. When they're first out of college, they're correcting everyone's posture. But when they've been 30 years in the clinic, they stop correcting. They realize that people have to correct themselves. Self-correction. You can't have someone behind you the whole time cracking a whip telling you to put this down and pick that up. It doesn't work like that. There's no point telling you about the foods that you shouldn't be eating. It's more about the foods that you need to eat to improve your health. There's still not enough emphasis from the Western, Western medical fraternity on eating well and living well because it's still drugs, drugs, drugs and surgery. 
you know, lip service is paid to eating the right kind of foods. You know what the right kind of foods are. They're not foods you generally buy at the supermarket. They're not foods that generally come in plastic packets or cans or bottles. They're not foods you pop in the microwave and go deet, deet, deet for, th for 60 seconds. That's not the kind of foods we're talking about here. So if you think logically about the best kind of foods for your body to improve, for your health to improve to a high level, these are foods that are naturally grown, right? Now, when we use the word naturally, we have to be careful because a lot of people get up in arms about that because we don't really live in a natural world anymore, do we, when you think about it? Every time you turn on the TV, you start to realize that nature is not really going the way that it likes to go anymore. So this is why I really like people to buy food from farmer's markets and to you know buy produce that's grown locally, to eat fresh. Now, whether you're a carnivore or a vegan, I don't care because I'm both. I go through periods of making superb vegan dishes for weeks on end. I can eat a lot of vegan food. And I go through periods of time where I eat meat, but I prefer not to eat a lot of meat. All right? So my emphasis really is on fresh, and it's generally vegetables um, make up the bulk of my food intake. We're looking at seeds, we're looking at nuts, we're looking at legumes like lentils and chickpeas, things like that. And we're looking at lots of different types of herbs that we grow, fresh herbs, lots of spices get incorporated in there. This way of eating cleans the gut up by default. It provides my body with all the fiber I need for having two, three bowel motions a day. It provides all the vitamins and minerals I need without having to take any supplementation. It also negates the need for taking Candida Remove, okay? Because the more sugar you eat, the more crap you eat, the more your gut becomes in disarray, the more you want to try and steer it back on track. That's when you need products to get you back. But remember, when your gut's in great shape like mine, you've got no need for taking supplementation anymore because your body will grab all it needs from the nutrition that you're consuming. So you either consume crap or you consume good food. Right? And a lot of people have one crap day a week and six good days a week. I can't see the point in that. Can't see the point in it. You need to become disciplined with your diet before you can start understanding the introduction of crap into the diet. Otherwise, it becomes just one big blur. I like the sayings. People dig their own graves with their teeth. They actually do. One third of what you eat keeps you alive and the other two thirds keeps your doctor alive. Okay, you don't need so much food. Don't eat a lot, but what you do eat is quality. So the quality foods need to stay there with you and the poor quality needs to go. Consider foods like your best friends. Now look at the qualities of your best friends. If you are around a best friend all the time, all the time, okay, that made you feel like crap, that gave you gas and wind and bloating, that made you gain weight, you'd probably kick that friend pretty quick. But that's what sugar does. And it's still your friend. This is the trap. It's the convenience world we live in, the takeaway foods. These are the foods that are gonna go first. Okay, the pinnacle foods of the takeaway. Golden arches, you know, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, these sort of foods just need to get the chop. They're expensive. You're just a waste of money. Money should be invested into proper food. So should I stop certain types of food during treatment? Yes, you should. But you know what to stop. Because we've talked enough about that in previous videos. All right? And if you don't stop, then it's on you. Thanks for tuning in. Things. It's Eric Backer again, the naturopath. I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, go to yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies if you want to download my free resources I've created just for people like you. These are things I used in the clinic for patients and you'll find them very useful. It's the free candida diet, the cleanse. So it's a good introduction on how to set your program together. There's the ultimate candida diet shopping list and there's also the candida symptom tracker. Yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies. Thanks for tuning in and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.